Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at the brand new release of Endeavor OS Atlantis 21.4. But before we get started, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Endeavor OS, if you go over to the website, it's EndeavorOS.com. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. This is the page you'll be met with. The Atlantis release is in orbit. You come over, they've got Endeavor, they've got news, download and help, community, donate, and then info. It's a very thorough website. If you scroll down, it just basically states, welcome to Endeavor OS, a terminal-centric distro with a vibrant and friendly community at its core. And let me tell you something, guys, it does have a really good community and a good forum. I have ran Endeavor OS in the past on a backup laptop and ran into some issues. I went to the forums, put in my question. Of course, I searched first to see if the question had already been asked. It hadn't put in my question and I had it solved within about 15 minutes. So that is something definitely if you're thinking about switching to Linux or just thinking about switching to a different operating system in general, that's very important. So they do have a good forum community and it states it right there, a friendly community, a powerful and flexible base. It is based on Arch and then Discovery, the Endeavor OS knowledge base, the place where you can find our wiki articles and video tutorials to basically give you guidelines on how to do everything and where you're going. And then it states you can create your own destiny and then they have their very own welcome app, which we'll look at here in a second. Then you go down and it shows you their mirror lists. And then you've got the different flavors. You can get it in XFCE, Mate, Cinnamon, Gnome, Plasma, Budgie, LXQT, i3 Window Manager, Bspawn, and Sway. So if we go up top, what I want to do right now is go ahead and click on Download. Latest release. And right here it tells you it's Atlantis 21.4 or 21 underscore 4, however you want to say it. And it lets you know some of the changes. The offline option installs a fully themed XFCE. Basically, when you download this, it's in the XFCE environment. You can get the online option, which gives you the option between XFCE, Mate, LXQT, Cinnamon, Plasma, Gnome, Budgie, and then, of course, the Tiling Window Managers, i3 Window Manager, Bspawn, and Sway. Now, the live environment has been updated. It comes with Calamares 3.2.47-5. It comes with Firefox 94.0.2-2. Linux kernel is 5.15.5. Mesa is 21.2.5-1. And NVIDIA DKMS 495.44-6, which is definitely up. It used to be at the 490. So if you're running an NVIDIA card, that is definitely good news for you. And then it states EOS app improvements and additions. Now, NVIDIA users have a new sanity check for NVIDIA and kernel updates. The check helps prevent boot problems after update. That is major because I've heard a lot of people that are running Endeavor, and I've also heard it with folks that are running on MX, not connected, but when they do an update, everything's broke. Now you don't have to worry about that. They've put in a preventative measure that'll help save you time and a lot of pain. Welcome has a new button, DE Information. DE is the installed desktop name and opens the browser to dedicated desktop environment info pages. And then we can scroll down a little bit more. It lets you know the changes to Calamares. Then they have a little video. Then you've got ISO and running systems. A couple little things here they wanted to give you information on. But they keep you up to date. They keep you well informed. And it is just a great website and it is a great operating system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of the web browser. And if you download Endeavor OS, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine. This is the screen you're met with. You start right off with a welcome app. As you all know, I've told you in past videos, I love the fact that you have a welcome app. Not all Linux distros do, but those that have it make it a lot easier for the new user coming to their OS or a new user that is leaving Windows or Mac to come over to Linux. In this welcome app, it just basically has start the installer. You have your partition manager. You can install community additions. Now, what I want to show you here is let's go ahead and click on that. And it'll open up the Calamares installer. We will just go click next, next, next. 
We'll go ahead and erase, click next. And right here, it lets you have the community editions. You can have a base install or you can get B-Spawn or the Sway edition. So if those are ones that you want to use, that's how you access them is right there in the Calamari's installer. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and close out of that. We'll come back down. It's got latest release info. If you click on that, it will open up the page we were just at that gives you all the info on the release. So we will go ahead and close out of that. You can update your mirrors right here. This is very important. Before you update the system or you install any software of any kind, you want to go in here and update your mirrors. Doesn't take any time. It takes about two to four minutes. Once it's done, you're going to have the links to the fastest and quickest downloads available. Installation tips, change your display resolution, and how to share system logs. And then on the bottom, you've got software news, change log, and help. Now, if you go up here, you've got general info, gives you the website. There's direct access to their forum. So if you're having an issue, you can open up their welcome app, click on forum, and it will take you directly to their forum. Now, if you decide that Endeavor OS is the operating system you want to stick with and you're going to be in it for a while, I suggest you go ahead and go sign up in their forums. That way you've got access to everything that you need. Down here, you've got general system, you've got lounge, you've got which desktop environment you're running, Endeavor OS United, announcements and news. It's just a quick way to keep yourself updated about your operating system. Also to see what problems other users might be having. And if you're having the same problems, you guys can get it worked out and handled in the forums. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got their wiki, you've got donate, you've got news, and then you've got about welcome. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the welcome app. And as you can see, the desktop has a great background. I love the look of this background, but I'm going to go ahead and right click. You can create a launcher. You can create your URL link. You can create a folder. You can create document, open terminal, arrange desktop icons, desktop settings. And then, of course, your applications are accessible from right here. I'm going to go ahead and go to desktop settings. And as you can see, you get the base Endeavor OS wallpaper, and then you get three other XFCE themed wallpapers. I like the one that's out of the box. And as a user of Linux, you all know if you want to add your own wallpaper, it's not rocket science and it's pretty easy. Then you can go to menus. Over here, you can adjust your desktop menus, your window list menus. You can show application icons in the menu. It just gives you a a couple different ways you can customize what you want to do here. And then, of course, your icons. Right now, the icon size is set at 48. If you wanted to ramp those up just a little bit, you could bump them up to 50. Or you could even go even bigger if you wanted to. I'm going to leave them at 48. Icon orientation, that's where they would show on your desktop. So let's go ahead and just put the home icon. As you can see, it's up here on the top left. Now, if you wanted it on the top right, you could just click on top right and arrange icons, and it would put them over here. Now, if you wanted to make them bigger, you could amp them up a little bit right there. As you can see, it's getting bigger. Or you could take it back down and make it smaller. That's up to you. We can go ahead and move that back to the left, and it's back over here, or just click it and not have it on the desktop at all. So that is your desktop settings. Let's go ahead and close that. And as you can tell, we have one panel. It's on the bottom. You've got over to the right, live user, date and time, notifications, battery power, sound, internet, English, and then of course you can take your screenshot right here. If you want to take a picture of your entire screen, you just zip down here, click on it, click OK, and it takes it. You can save it to your pictures. That's just a quick way to take a screenshot of your whole screen. Then if you right click on the panel, you've got properties, move, remove, and then panel preferences, add new items, log out, help. Let's go ahead and go to panel preferences. Now right here, it's in the horizontal mode. You've got options here to move it vertical or make it a desk bar. If you make it vertical, it'll move it to the left over here. And as you can see, everything is kind of sideways. Or you can make it a desk bar where it makes everything right side up, but you can't read Endeavor up over here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back to horizontal. I like it down here. The panel can be locked there. And then row size, you can actually change the size of your rows on your panel. If you wanted to make them bigger, you could. As you can see, everything gets a little bigger. And then you could change the number of rows. If you wanted open applications to stack on top of each other right here, you could just bump that up to two rows. And then the next application you open up would have a panel below this one. So I'm going to go ahead and bump that back down to one. And we will go ahead and close out of that. Coming over to the left, you have your web browser. And then, of course, you have your file manager, which is the Thunar file manager. Let's go ahead and maximize that. 
I like Thunar. It's lightweight. It's fast. It stays out of your way so you can get work done. Over here, you've got your usual suspects. And then, of course, your home or live user folders are right here. Now, if you want to show your hidden files, just go over here to view, show hidden files. You can click on that and it will show all your hidden files. Now, if that's something you don't want because you're afraid you might mess something up, just go ahead and hide those and you're good to go. And you've got file, edit, view, go and help up top. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down to the bottom, we have terminal. Let's go ahead and open that up. I'm going to drag it in the middle and I'm going to go ahead and make that full screen. I want to see if they have HTOP installed and they do not. So let's try top and they have top installed. I have issued this virtual environment, three gigabytes of RAM. At present, we are using 631 megabytes with just the terminal open. So that's, you know, upper lightweight, lower middleweight. I mean, at this point in time, I'd probably have to say middleweight because I have seen some XFCE environments that run about two, 300 megabytes. So I'm going to go middleweight on this. If you disagree with that, please let me know in the comments below. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down to the bottom, you have the Endeavor OS log tool. It creates and provides logs for rescue. So should you have any problems, you can go in here and look at any errors that you've had and be able to investigate them. And it really helps you understand what your system is doing. Instead of what you're used to on Windows, where it says there's a fatal error and gives you 4,312 digits or numbers or whatever it might give you, right here, it will let you know what's wrong, where the problem lies, and then you can find a way to fix it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down to the bottom, let's go ahead and open up the Endeavor OS app menu. And right here, you've got favorites, all applications, you've got accessories, you've got an application finder, archive manager, calculator, screenshot tool, task manager. Now, if you open up task manager, it's going to say that you're using just a little bit more resources than what you see on top for the simple fact that some of this operating system is running inside of RAM. When you do a HTOP or a TOP, it just lets you know what RAM the operating system is consuming to operate as opposed to RAM being used to run the operating system. You've got 237 processes open. I have two CPUs issued to this machine. At present, it's using about 1% of the CPUs. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down here, development. You got CMake, Icon Browser, Meld, Graphics. You got Restretto Image Viewer. So if you do want to work with GIMP or something like that, you're going to have to download it. Internet, we have Firefox, Multimedia. You got Pulse Audio Volume Control, Parole Media Player. Settings, you've got advanced network configuration. You have appearance. Let's go ahead and open up appearance. On appearance, you can change the style that you're using. At present, we're using Arc Darker. I like it. I'm not going to change that. But if you did want to change it, you could just come up here and click on Arc Dark, and it would put it like that. So it's that easy. You can change everything with a click of a button. Then you can go to icons. Right now, we're using Arc XD icon theme. Now, down here, if you wanted to go with something like Paper Mono Dark, just pick it. And as you can tell, everything changed. Look down here to the right. Watch it. See it changes. So you can adjust that or change those to however you like. And if you want to download a theme offline, you can download it, put it in your downloads folder. And when you come down here to add, you can add it from a different location, upload it, and then you can use those icons. Over to Fonts. It comes with Noto Sans regular out of the box. If you click on that, you can change it. You can go regular, medium, bold, black, or you can pick a total different font if you choose, or you can just make the font bigger if you choose. Let's go ahead and bump this up to 13. Let's select. And as you can see, the fonts got bigger across the operating system. So let's go to settings, show images on buttons, show images in menus. Now this, if you look down here where it says help, and it's got that little image next to it. If you don't want that there, you can just click on that. It disappears and you can just have the text version of the buttons or you can leave them there. That's up to you. That's up to how you want to set it up for your personal preferences. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down. We'll go back to settings. You've got color profiles, display, default applications, file manager settings, keyboard, power management, session startup, removable drives, QT5 settings. Then your settings manager. If you open up your settings manager, It'll have everything in one place, your appearance, desktop, all of that there so you can adjust it and do what you want. Now, one thing I do want to point out here, if you start downloading applications and you notice those applications are starting up when you boot your PC up, go over here to session and startup. 
application auto start. As you can see right here, these are all the applications that auto start when you turn your system on. Let's say this XFCE settings daemon is an application that you downloaded, but it's starting itself. All you got to do is come over here. You don't want it to auto start, uncheck it, go up here and close and you're good to go. Next time you reboot your system, it will not auto start. Then you've got your current session and then of course advanced. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down here, back to settings, and you've got window manager tweaks, YAD settings, workspaces. Now, YAD is pretty awesome. I love this tool. If you open it up, you can adjust anything. You can adjust the width of a dialog window, default date format. You can just come in here and really get into the thick of things with customizing your system, if that's something you want to do. And of course, the editor's over here. You can change this up if you want to. So it's just something to look at if you decide to download it and take it for a test drive play around with it a little bit and kind of get used to it. And I think that's pretty much it in settings. Let's go ahead and go to system. Then you've got configure EOS updater, Endeavor log file, G-Sync, hardware locality, Thunar file manager, reflector simple, install the system. And that is pretty much everything there. Now I do want to tell you to install software, you do have to use Pac-Man, which means everything will be installed by terminal, but you can download PayMac for the graphic user interface as opposed to doing everything through the terminal. But that's your decision. It doesn't come pre-installed. If you're new to Endeavor, I suggest you go ahead and download PayMac. Once you download it, you'll have a graphic user interface to be able to install your software and keep your system up to date. Well, that was a quick look at the newest release of Endeavor OS Atlantis. Great arts distribution, XFCE desktop environment. And it has really, in the last three or four years, become really popular in the community. I believe it's giving Manjaro a run for the money, but that's my opinion. Tell me what you think. Is it something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine, take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos we are producing... You can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in my next video.